While Wayne is trying to rehab, Valley's seeing red. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, Batman Knights, and Azrael Batman Armor Red Version. Upon his father's death, college student John Paul Valley learns that he had been genetically altered and trained since birth by a secret society known as the Order of St. Dumas. They then activate the psychological conditioning, forcing him to become the most elite enforcer, Azrael. While on a mission to Gotham City, Azrael crosses paths with Batman and soon turns on the Order to join the Dark Knight. Later, when Bruce Wayne is paralyzed by Bane, Bruce asks John Paul to become Batman for some time. John Paul then launches a campaign of brutal justice against the criminals of Gotham City and creates his own Batman that suit of armor. Talk about a perfect storm. You take a character as unstable as Jean-Paul Valley, and then you give him the keys to the cave. Just before we get a closer look at the red version of Azrael Armored Batman, sending out a big thank you first, if I can, to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that provided the sample we could have a look at. Like the blue one we looked at before, some assembly is required. You have to take actually all these plastic pieces of the cape and attach them onto the back of the figure's body. Because of that, he's actually a little bit taller than a standard size figure. Sure, if you were just looking at the figure alone, he'd be about seven inches. But because, again, he has the pieces of the cape on the back, that actually gives him a height of more seven and a half inches, or about 19 centimeters tall. With this one actually being the retail release, I probably should have looked at him first. I was too anxious, though, actually to look at the blue version, which was actually the Platinum Edition. Same body, yes, different color scheme altogether. Another comparison we can also bring in as well is the, the original Bruce Wayne Batman. Here's what he looks like from the Nightfall series. And uh, like we had done before, I'm going to bring in not only the blue version of him from the Mattel DC Multiverse line, but I also still happen to have the red version, just to go ahead and give you guys an, a scale size idea. I'm not sure if this is going to come as a surprise to any of you, but the accessories that come include with this release of Azrael Batman are in fact the same ones that came included with the Platinum Edition release. Both of them come included with the exact same display stand. Not that I expect them to change the wheel if the wheel isn't broken. And you got this DC logo still printed down below here, still one peg off to the side. And these come really handy, especially with these kind of characters with so much heaviness on the back of their figure's body. I'll hold on to these really close. The figure also comes in clue with the same trading card. And again, while I'm not at all bummed that they use the exact same trading card, this happens to be the one that came in clue with the Platinum Edition release. I do wish, though, that being one is blue and one is red, they could have matched the cards accordingly. At the very least, even if it's the exact same image, if the Platinum Edition at least changed the red to the blue, at least the cards would look different from one another and would match accordingly to the characters that they come included with. The backs of the cards are exactly the same. The real name, of course, doesn't change at all. And of course, there's a very substantial read-up with both the cards. I read these at the beginning of the reviews. And move those off to the side. Yeah, though no, no accessories at all come included with either one of these characters. At the very least, I do wish that maybe gripping hands could have also come included with these, just because close fist isn't going to cut it when it comes to if you wanted, for example, to have him holding accessories. He just isn't going to be able to. Some assembly, though, was required, no different than the one that we looked at before. You have these plastic pieces of his more futuristic-looking cape. You get six of these, and all have to be attached the exact same way. I'm going to remove just one of them so you guys can see, like we did with the blue one. Uh, while it does look like there's a hinge right here, that hinge would only fool you. It's actually just all one molded piece. They plug in place. There's a hole right here and a slot right here that you then take this little lip of plastic and this little peg, and they fit in. And then you, again, have to do this one, two, three, four, five, six times. Plugging on the back does, again, give them some much back heaviness. So, of course, when you put him on display, you might want to make sure that he, again, is straight. And if you are planning to put him in any, any other pose than just this boring pose I've got him displayed right now, yes, yes, make sure you've got the display stand on the ready. Again, kind of disappointed the fact that the figure doesn't come included with at least swapped out hands. Because while this one does have, at least this time around, silver hands rather than the blue we looked at before, just the fact that they could have given us some gripping hands would have been a nice treat. Really given us then the opportunity to kind of see the bladed fingers that he has on this particular suit. Bringing in the Platinum Edition release of, of Nightfall Batman, so you can see the difference between the two. Knights and Batman, I should really say. Again, I think is using the same bodies as the Nightfall release of Azrael Batman, just changing, of course, now the new top part of his cowl, giving a much more spikier looking top to his suit, and of course now giving him a visor face instead of the two eyes. 
I do like both of these. I know in the review of the blue one, I did say like I would really kind of stick with the blue one and kind of being the more traditional Azrael, but really like nightfall Azrael suit is kind of more the traditional blues and the golds. If more to think of like the Night's End version of Batman, where he's kind of near the end and he's going crazy by then, I wanted to say bat mm, crazy. I'm not going to say it though. It's a family channel. But uh, yeah, I do kind of kind of picture more to be the more red color scheme. What's rather interesting, though, is not just the case that they changed up the coloring of the blue now to the red, but actually some of the colors on the rest of the figure are a little bit different as well. First of all, you can see like on the front of his torso, see how this one had the pastel blue that matched the colors of his gloves. This one now has kind of more of a pastel or light, light gray. And also speaking of grays, the lighter colors of the grays are very um, much more obvious here on the red release, where it had more of a darker gray here for the blue cow version of him. Other than that, it looks to be like the goals are exactly the same. So everything that's gray on this figure is now just simply, again, lighter gray. The coloring of kind of more of his mustard uh, belt pockets here on the sides of his thighs seem to be exactly the same, as well as the pockets on the sides of his utility belt appear to be the same as well. Uh, the figure as well does have, again, a little bit of a texturing down below here. We've kind of already talked about that when we looked at the Platinum Edition release of him. And he still sort of unfortunately has the problem that we'll talk more about when we talk about the figure's posability. That because, again, his trunks are so small like this, not that I really want to be drawing everyone's attention to Jean-Paul Valley's package size. But just to get, like, with the way that his thighs attach inside... When you are moving his thighs around, for example, this actually, this one does it a little bit easier. I find I'm often kind of having to untuck this part of his, of his trunks just to fit it back over top of the top of this thigh. It doesn't seem to be the problem as much with this release as it was with the blue version, but it's probably, probably going to be a problem that you're going to still face with the figure. Still has like the little row of, uh, I guess it's ammunition that he comes from the back of the figure's body. It's kind of a little harder to see because he's got, again, the curtains there in front. And these just, again, are softer plastic. When you, They are soft, but they're not soft to the point where, like, moving the figure around, I'm fearful at all that these would break. They have allotted for enough clearance. You can see there's a lot of extra wiggle space to work with. And even if you are moving the figure's arms for around back and forth, these never get tight to the point where I feel like they're going to tug and start to rip it. He's got some nice gauntlet blades there on the sides. These are softer plastic. And he's also got these spikes that stick out. These really cool little fanned out blades that has sticking out the sides of his legs. These are, again, all, all executed by using a softer plastic. In fact, the only thing that's really actually harder plastic is the parts of the cape that you have to assemble on the back of the figure's body. But again, like it's going to add a lot of additional heaviness on the back of the figure's body. So just make sure, again, when you're displaying this guy, especially if you're going to put him in any other interesting poses than the way I had him right now, use the display stand. It's there. Why not use it? For the figure's articulation, it's going to be exactly the same as the blue cow release. So because he does have a ball joint in his head, it rotates all the way around. Despite having things that would get in the way, like you would imagine his higher collar, and because he has these spikes on the, you know, again, the, the skirting, the, not the skirting, the actual cape pieces that he has on the sides, you would think that those would all be things that would get in the way when it comes to his head articulation. Yet, it's not the case. You can very easily rotate his head all the way around. They've allotted for enough space on either side. The head looks up, the head looks down, and it can move very freely back and forth as well. As we move a little further down, the figure does, already mentioned, does have hinges on his shoulders. I did notice on this side that his shoulders are really tight. Not a deal breaker at all, because again, I'd much rather tighter joints than having overly loose joints. Unlike the blue one we looked at before, he doesn't seem to have any looseness in the same places. Ankles were loose on the other one. Knees started to develop a little bit of looseness, but they seem to be a lot tighter here on the red release. And again, I would imagine that would just mileage would vary depending on the figures. If you're just lucky enough to pick up one in the shelf, that just happens to have tighter joints. Back though, two joints, the arms do f move forward and back. You can also easily move them outward. Figure has a swivel in his bicep once again, double hinge on the elbow, and again, the hands do rotate all the way around. Once again, I just really admire the fact that they gave him as much clearance here for the ammunition belt, just because again, like moving his arms forward and back, you would really hate to think that that's going to be one thing that's going to snag, one thing that's going to get tight, one thing that's going to rip, and yet it's not going to be the case at all. Upper torso is going to be once again on that ball joint. Further from that, this part of his body is actually a very soft plastic. You can see by the way that this lifts up, and these belt pockets actually on the sides are all attached as one piece. So when you are moving his lower half, for example, which again is a little harder to do just because again, he's got so much cape here on the back of the figure's body. But when you are moving this, everything kind of moves collectively. Legs once again split, they're on ratcheted joints. See the ratcheted joints, everybody? See the ratcheted joints, everybody? Okay, that's enough of that. Figure legs does move forward and back. Again, I don't have as many of the issues that I had with like the, the trunks. 
the other one, if just bring back in the other one, still has the problem. I was just moving him around just a couple of minutes ago and his leg popped out once again from his lower trunks, just because again, they're using softer plastic. But just if they had given him a little bit more clearance, yeah, it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue here with the red version. Has a little bit of a wiggle there on the top of his thigh. The figure does have a double hinge on his knee, nice and tight joints like that. And then he also has the ankle pivot back and forth, an ankle rocker. And the figure does also have, once again, toe articulation. I suppose if given the choice, if twist my rubber arm, and I only had the chance to choose one of these, I suppose, let's say if I already had the Nightfall release of, of Azrael Batman, I probably would have then chose, I would say, the red release. Just because, again, like the color scheme for Night, Nightfall Azrael Batman is, again, the blues, the golds, the darker grays. But because, again, carrying that over now to Knight's and ar armor look that he has later into the comic run, he kind of then migrates, I think, over to the red suit. Because of that, I would probably have, if just given the choice to pick up one of these, I probably would have gone the red. If, though, obviously, given the choice, I would love just to get both of them. Because they actually do look good together. Even though they are using the same body, even though, yes, they are using the same mold, and even though they have, unfortunately, yes, the same limitations when it comes to the additional uh, additional accessories that they come included with, I think that both of the figures have been really nice releases from the folks who were at McFarlane Toys. Still, though, unfortunately, though, I'm going to have to try to track one now down the Nightfall version of Azrael Batman. I'm hoping I'm not going to have to pay through the roof to try to get one, because now now that I have either one of these from Night's End, I'd love to get a Nightfall release of Azrael Batman to have displayed in the middle of the two. Of course, of course, the worst thing that can happen is when you get a brand new figure. What do you then all do? We all check on eBay just to see what the available prices is. Anybody walking into the room, by the way, hey, well, you're on eBay. What are, you, what are you doing over on eBay? No, I'm just curious. That's what we all say. Curious basically just is a word that translates to, I'm just looking for a figure that's at an affordable price, and I'm going to buy it if I can find one. I was more just curious, and I was just looking online just to see, out of curiosity, if there was any Azrael Nightfall Batman. And sure enough, there was two, only two listings. I was actually kind of surprised that there wasn't any more. One was for a sealed figure that was $145. One, and I couldn't even believe this, that a seller was selling a loose figure with just the trading card, and of course, just the display stand, $100. $100 for a loose figure. That tells me, first of all, I'm going to want to sit this one out and wait it out to see if I can find one at a better price. But it also tells me as well, it proves one theory that they are using the same uh, type of bodies with all those figures. Whether you have the Night's End Batman or you have the original Azrael Nightfall Batman, it seems to be the case that they are using the same bodies between the two which was something I assumed was going to be the case, and it seems to be the case. The colors were also r rather funny because they actually match the colors more closer to the red cow release that we looked at in this review. I just assumed, you know, blue and the gold would have been matching the colors of the Nightfall Batman, but actually his colors, if you look at the colors of his legs and you look at the color of his abdomen area, they're actually more closer resembling the retail release of Night's End Batman. I'm sure at some point I'll still try to track one down and hopefully find one at a much better price than $100 loose. Have you guys had the chance, by the way, to pick up either one of these Knights and Batman? I'm really of the two. Which one do you like more? Do you like the red cowl? Do you like the blue cowl? Let me know down below in the comments section. If I already had that Nightfall Batman, and just again, curiosity got the better of me, I ended up finding one for a good price. I probably would then display him if I only had one figure with the red cowl, just because again, I kind of consider this to be like the more Knights and release of, of Batman. But again, I'm really happy to have both. Both figures are really nice. Unfortunately, though, they are lacking, sorely lacking in accessories. Just some swappable hands would have gone a long way, just because again, he's got the spikes on the ends of the fingers. Maybe they didn't decide to have the open hands, just because again, like the spikes probably would have translated to pointy fingers and pointy fingers probably are a safety no-no big thank you once again to the folks over at, nonetheless at McFarlane Toys that were kind enough to provide this sample not only of the retail release Night's End Batman that we looked at in this review but just before that also the Platinum Edition Blue Cow version that we also had a look at as well again if given the choice if you had the choice to only choose one of them would you have gone with the red cow or would you have gone with the blue cow let me know if you guys did enjoy this video in the meantime want to hit it with a like if you guys are loving the content that you guys are seeing and would like to stick around for more we may be wrapping up things right now for john paul valley but we are going to be looking at some more dc multiverse reviews those are already going to be in the pipeline so make sure you're coming back to this channel on a regular basis yes hit the subscribe button down below yes turn on the bell notification yes make sure you're coming back here on a regular basis as always guys thanks for watching see you guys next time